The Supreme Court has decided that it will in fact hear the case involving Trump claiming that presidential immunity prevents him from being prosecuted by special counsel Jack Smith in the election interference case. Now, this is a big win for Trump already, and I'll explain why. But just to get you caught up on what's been transpiring, Trump's defense, a big argument we've heard from him and his legal team is that he should not be prosecuted for his involvement in January 6th, for his involvement in the fake elector scheme, because he was president after all, and presidents enjoy immunity. Now, I personally disagree with that interpretation because presidential immunity pertains to duties that are performed in the White House as President of the United States. That type of protection should not also extend to a presidential candidate who engages in potentially illegal behavior while seeking reelection or seeking the office of the presidency. So that's my interpretation, obviously I'm not a legal scholar. It was also the interpretation of the lower courts. And now because of the Trump legal team essentially appealing this case all the way to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court will now hear it and make their determination. Now look, the Supreme Court has ruled against Trump in the past. So while I, I get that it's incredibly tempting to kind of get nihilistic about this and just assume the worst is gonna happen with their decision, I would just hold on that and wait and see how it plays out. But even if, even if the Supreme Court rules against Donald Trump and says, no, 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 presidential immunity does not provide protection prosecutorially for Donald Trump. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members. And then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. The fact of the matter is this is already a major, major win for Trump. So number one, I should note that the court has agreed to expedite the case and hear arguments on the week of April 22nd. So that's well before the presidential election. But keep in mind that now that the Supreme Court has decided to hear the case, that means that the trial is very, very likely gonna be postponed even further. In fact, it might be postponed until after the election. And should Donald Trump win the general election and become president again, he's just gonna pardon himself from the federal case. Remember, we're talking about the federal case, not the Georgia state case, which he would not be able to pardon himself from. But in this particular case, he would be since it is a federal trial. Now, with that said, the decision is a significant win for Trump for at least two different reasons. He will now be able to argue for sweeping presidential immunity that if granted could undermine the bevy of legal challenges that he faces. And he will be able to push off a trial likely for several, several weeks at least, at least. Now, had the justices rejected Trump's emergency request to pause the case, Special Counsel Jack Smith would have been able to move more quickly, virtually guaranteeing that there would be a trial in the election interference case prior to the general election taking place. Now, the court weirdly had waited two weeks before making their decision to hear this case. And I don't know if I wanna make too much of that. I don't know what the genuine reasons were for taking so long to make a decision about whether or not they would hear the case. But Steve Vladek, who is a CNN Supreme Court analyst and also a professor at the University of Texas School of Law, has an interesting theory. He says that the surprise is that it took the court the better part of two weeks to reach this result from which no justice has publicly dissented. Meaning it does appear, at least for now, that unanimously these judges, Supreme Court justices, I should say, wanted to hear this case. The justices couldn't reach consensus on a way to resolve the matter without giving it full briefing and argument. So they're not gonna rush this. They've decided to really hear Trump out on this. And so this is the way they intend to go forward. It's hard to read any tea leaves into whether that makes the court more likely to side with former President Trump when it finally resolves this immunity claim. But it certainly means that even in the worst case scenario for Trump, the January 6th prosecution will be delayed for at least another three to five months. 
That's a pretty big win for Trump, even if he ends up losing this case. And Vladek also says that, you know, it, it, it did take two weeks. We don't really know why, but you know, ultimately it does appear that the Supreme Court and the justices within it felt that this was important enough to take up, rather than just simply upholding the decisions that did not grant Trump presidential immunity in the lower courts. Now, again, the lower courts didn't side with Trump. There was a unanimous 57 page opinion from the DC circuit earlier this month that rejected the immunity claims. Trump and Smith filed dueling briefs briefs for the Supreme Court or at the Supreme Court over whether the decision should be put on hold. And so Smith countered in his own filing on Valentine's Day, February 14th, that Trump wasn't close to meeting the standard required to pause proceedings. US District Judge Tanya Chutkin postponed the first trial date originally set for March 4th. Obviously, we have that date coming up real soon next week, which appeals courts wrestled with Trump's claims while appeals courts wrestled with Trump's claims of immunity. Given the delays already, however, trial likely wouldn't begin until May at the very earliest. And that's assuming that the Supreme Court makes its decision about immunity immediately, quickly after they hear the arguments. We'll see how it plays out, but I do agree with the analysis here that this is already a pretty big win for Trump. He has a genuine interest in delaying, delaying, delaying as much as humanly possible, especially as he's very likely looking at the polling coming out in regard to the general election, which unfortunately makes it very clear that Trump is likely going to beat Biden. And I'm not saying that based on one standout poll. I say that based on several polls now that show Trump leading Biden, both nationally and also in the swing states. Swing states are incredibly important to win in an electoral system where we rely on the electoral college. So things aren't really looking great for Biden to begin with. And for anyone who hopes that justice will be served in regard to Trump's behavior with the election interference case, well, he might not suffer any consequences in the end if this case is delayed to the point where he becomes president and the trial begins or should begin after he becomes president. You just dismiss it. And so we'll see, we'll see what happens. But that's the big update in regard to the election interference federal case.